Good evening, everybody. So glad to see you all. Let's sing a song that we haven't done, certainly on Wednesday night, in a very long time. To God be the glory. Let's all stand together and sing. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he has taught us, great things he hath done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come. To the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Amen. Maybe seated. I love that old song. How's everybody doing this evening? Everybody's quiet and cold, I guess. Does anybody have any prayer requests or praise reports? If you do, just raise your hand and I'll come to you. That way the people on the live stream can hear. And be praying for you as well we just want to thank you for the prayers that you extended for jerry and me me especially i was in terrible pain but they took care of it and told me the problem and said don't do that anymore and i said okay now you want to know what it was oh i can't tell you but god bless you thank you for your prayers he tricked us didn't he Anybody else? My goodness. Yes, ma'am. For Hayden Spence. Uh, Hayden Spence. Hayden Spence. Yeah, and also my daughter's best friend, Jared Robertson. He's on the prayer list, but he has a brain cancer, and he should be passing away any moment. Forty years old. Hmm. Brother Roy. Uh, keep Peggy Silva, uh, our missionary to Uruguay, in your prayers. She's having some blood pressure issues, and she's got an appointment with a neurologist. Okay. Okay. Peggy Silva. Uh, pray for Joel for his uh, marriage. Joel for his marriage. On oh, my way. That's all right. My nephew, Jerry Vincent, he's a pastor. He's over in Romania on a mission trip right now. Tell me his name one more time. Jerry Vincent. Jerry Vincent on a mission trip. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon. Uh, just pray for my co-workers and pray for me I have a I feel like the Lord's leading me to start a Bible study at work so just uh, pray that I make the right decisions and that I allow him to work Amen, Amen. You have one? Excuse me sir My brother Charlie has taken to the hospital this morning He's in intensive care. He'll be there overnight, respiratory, uh, that he's been suffering with for a lot of years. I'm glad I got a lot of family in New York that's watching over him and taking care and praying over him. So let's keep him in your prayers, too. More people praying. Love you, too. Pastor? Keep Lance Gordon and his family in your prayers. His wife, Renee, 
went home to be with the Lord yesterday. Brother Lance always works in our vacation Bible school, and she passed away yesterday. So keep Lance and the family in your prayers. All right. And if there are no others, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight, and we thank you. I always want to say thank you for the opportunity to come into your house. We could be many places tonight, but I thank you for the dedication of this body of believers to come into your house, Lord, to learn more about you and to hear Pastor teach us more about how can we, we can be effective Christians and how that we can more effectively reach our community. Please be with these needs that have been mentioned here tonight and those that have not been mentioned. We love you and we praise your holy name. Amen. Remember Brother Bentley, he's our missionary to he's our missionary to everywhere. Wherever he goes, he's he's passing out tracts and giving out a witness. And so he's back. We're gonna have eye surgery on him tomorrow. We're gonna try to get his vision straightened out. And so he, he doesn't drive and it gets dark, so he told me to come pick him up. And he's all dressed up and he said he's coming to preach. So I was prepared, but let's let's let Brother Bentley be our guest. Brother Bentley, they're waiting for you. Give them some of that fire, would you? Right here, yeah. Okay, yeah, right up there. Shalom. Uh, when I left here, I went to Odessa. I spoke in uh, Tabernacle Baptist Church, Pastor McDonald. Spoke also in Northside Baptist Church. Pastor Clyde Dale Chapman went on to Plains. I spoke in a Sunday school class in First Baptist Church of Plains. Then I went to Lubbock and uh, gave a testimony in Skyline Baptist Church. Appreciate your prayers. and I bring you greetings from our brothers and sisters in Texas. Well, we know the news, what's going on uh, in Israel, and it continues. So uh, I was reading this morning, Psalm 83. I'd like to look at Psalm 83. We ask God to bless you reading of his word and our understanding the attitude of our heart about these things that happened before and as we look at the news today it's happening now and again we're in the Old Testament we, we know the New Testament and grace we sang, may the whole earth hear his voice. That's a nice missionary voice. God calls. I mean, every Christian's a missionary. You have your place of service. And some, he lays on their hearts to go to other places, maybe in America and other countries, other languages. And... Uh, <laughs> are thankful for God's call for each person and he's in he and she are in their place now here's the in the Old Testament the enemies this is a song of Asaph and what I remember he was with music anybody wants to correct me please uh, He's speaking to God. Here, the, the word for God is Elohim. That's the first word used in Genesis 1.1. Right here is not Jehovah. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, 
and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarites, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Asher also is joined with them. They have opened the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kishon, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, yea, all their prince, princes as Zeba and as Zalmunna who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Oh, my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind, as the fire burning a wood, as, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. Verse 15. So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. It's Jehovah. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth. Asaph really feels uh, the thrust of the enemies of Israel. He has a zeal for Jehovah, for Elohim. And, and he's pouring out his heart before God with this situation. Now, Jesus came to bring peace. That's what he said after his resurrection, peace. Uh, but here, uh, Asaph is asking God, hold, hold not thy peace. <laughs> they must be punished. They don't seek forgiveness from God. They must be punished. Be not still. We were encouraged in the psalm, be still and know that I am God. We have times we need to be still before God. In the morning, nice to read the Bible and pray. But Asaph is saying, don't be still. Act now. But we remember, God said in the Old Testament, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And I think that's more our attitude in the New Testament is, is God who will take care of those who are against us, those who are wrong, those who reject.
a tumult there in verse 2, tumult. Well, we see some of that today, what the demonstrations that have been by the uh, Muslim people in, in France and in America. They are for Hamas. When Israel has presented uh, the demonic way in which they, they moved into Israel, how they treated the people, old people, men, women, and children, killed them, abused them, raped the, the women. As a pastor mentioned, in, and I heard about it, they, they even cooked I don't know, those two babies in an oven and sat down and ate uh, food out of their refrigerator. So we can somehow sense what Hasaph is feeling and why he's calling out unto God to make things right. The tumult, and then they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And I'm thinking of Psalm 2, you know, when what happened in Psalm 2, the world is against God and his Messiah. I'm in Psalm 2, just looking at the first uh, three verses, Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, Jehovah, and against his anointed. That's Mashiach. That's the Messiah. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. They don't want the, the, the truth of God. They don't want the ways of God. And in this Old Testament time, God was giving the light to the nations through the people of Israel. And so as, when they rejected what the Israelites were represented, they were rejecting God and his Messiah. So it's all related. It goes a different ways. Uh, I knew I had a pastor in Israel, Solomon Ostrovsky. He was a Jew born in Ukraine and born around uh, 1910, 11. And his father and sister were killed in a pogrom by the Orthodox Christians. And he said, as he, the problem with the Jews is they hate Jesus. They hate Jesus. Well, Jesus has given us love for all people. We, we don't want to hate anybody. Pulling in here tonight, there was a young man, you know, sitting on the corner begging. Our hearts go out to the, even these young people. Maybe you know more about it than I do. They're on drugs or whatever. But we have love for others. But there are those who have hate. <laughs> We try to throw coals of fire on their heads by returning their hate with love. Maybe some will be saved. And I think that's really what Asaph is, gets at when he, we come as we come to the end. Hate, and they lift up their head, you know, in in pride and. Persecution and thinking we're less than them. Well, in a sense, we are. <laughs> That's why we became a Christian, because we understood who we are and how needy we are in God. And they need to be humbled. And that's part of the judgment of God. To humble people that they might surrender 
and believe in God and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. A message that, thank God, I heard here in America. My mother heard it. She believed it, and she tried to pass it on to me. Wonderful heritage that we have to pass on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Oh, they make plans, they talk, they make decisions. I remember uh, witnessing to a Jew in Scroon Lake, New York. Uh, that's in the Adirondacks, probably 1972 or 73. And he said his father, they would have uh, the map of Israel, and they all we would meet together. The Jews would meet together, and they would talk and plan and say, uh, where should we go, and when should we go, and how should we go, why should we go? Yes, well, this is what the evil people do. They make counsel together, and they're united. And look at thousands who, of Muslims who uh, give their consent to what was done in Israel. So we need to be in prayer, pray for these Muslims before they, uh, before they turn on us. And they, they can do it. They've done it and they shall do it again. They work together, you know, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and Hamas in Gaza. They're all they're all together. The Jews are in a sense like that also. They are one. A Jew doesn't really see himself as a sin sinner. He knows that his people sin, but it's not personal. It's it's the people. And these Muslims are together as one. Now, we'll say in uh, France, there are some Muslims who publicly uh, speak against this, this type of uh, expression of Islam. Uh, killing those who do not believe. There are those imams, imams, that's the the leader of, of the mosque in, in France. France, what France is trying to do is that all imams must be trained in France. It's <laughs> not to be trained uh, I don't know, Saudi Arabia or Iran, Egypt, Muslim Brotherhood of Egypt. So France says, we want you to be trained here. So they, they do make efforts to limit the the evil expression of the of the Muslims in France. Against thy people there in verse three, the people of Israel, the believers, and consulted against the hidden ones. Uh, I just taking the English, I thought of that verse in Colossians three. Yet just from the word hidden, Colossians 3, I think we're in the uh, first four verses, Colossians 3, first four verses, I'm reading from the King James. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above not on things on the earth. Mm, what can I say? I just visited some uh, pastors here in Texas, and I've seen more football and baseball than I've seen in a long time. So I don't know. Let's get be on the word, you know? Right, Pastor Maddox? <laughs> oh, I've had my fill of football and baseball for a while. Uh, my one claim to fame. I played. 
on the baseball team of the Christian Science Monitor. Do you know what that is? <laughs> if you don't know, you don't need to know. <laughs> well, that was high school days. What did we know then, huh? who the Christian scientists were? Actually, I had a grandmother who, who was a believer, but she became Christian science. When she got cancer, she refused the normal medicine. She died when my mother was eight. Her husband, German-born, never remarried. And so my mother was the oldest of the three, and she had to be mother. Okay, we're, we're back here in the, in the heavenly, so let's sit on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Hid with Christ in God. Hidden ones. I, I, I assume that he's talking about those who are believers, the Jewish people. Verse 4, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Uh, we go in the book of Esther. Remember Haman? He was an Amalekite. Esther 3, verses 6 and 9. Esther. Okay, now we're back. Esther here. Ezra. Esther 3. Verse 6. Remember Haman? working with King Ahasuerus there in Iran, in Persia. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. He was the Jew. I think it's the uncle of Esther. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai, all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. And it was 120 provinces. It ran from India to Ethiopia. I don't think there were many Jews in other places at that time. He was, he was trying to wipe out all the Jews, all of them. Six and then nine. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasures. Hitler tried it. He killed six million. And we can see the hate rising up for the Jew. I was in England once, walking on the sidewalk, talking to a Jew. I remember trying to witness to him. And there was a shrubbery. Behind the shrubbery, there came a voice. Heil Hitler! Hatred in the hearts of people. Well, we tried to show them love. <laughs> yeah, others showed them hatred. We showed them love. Maybe you can win some by love. We're giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you want to say amen, you go ahead. <laughs> it's not going to disturb Pastor Larry, is it? Where, where, where? We're in Colossians. No, we're going to be back in Psalm 83, somewhere back there. Where is that? Psalm 83. Number 
Let us cut them off from being a nation. And that's what Armageddon's about. I want to destroy all the Jews. This thing is festering now, festering now. It's going to happen. The world is going to want to slaughter all the Jews. We're going to love them all. We're not going to kill them, huh? We want to have, want some of them to be with us in, in their heaven, with their Messiah and their God. We want them to be with us, too. Yeah. They want to cut the name of Israel may be you no know, more in remembrance. Well, that's not going to happen. God's covenant, covenanted himself to them, and he will return to them after the Battle of Armageddon, set up the Messianic Kingdom, and then it's uh, Reynolds Showers. He wrote a lot of things about the end times, and he said, Many of the promises which God made to Israel will be fulfilled in the millennial kingdom. That's what we're headed for. And there's a lot of Christians deny it, say there are not going to be any millennial kingdom. God's got the last word, right? <laughs> He's already told us what's going to be. When I, in Romania, where I've my first trip was 72 in 1972. But when I tell Christians in Romania that, that there, there are Christians who don't believe in the millennial thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, he, they all say the same thing. Haven't they read the Bible? Well, they have. But you got men like John Piper, they don't believe that. One consent and they're confederate against the confederate, you know, the confederate army, be together, and they are together. And it's a mighty force, and the gates of hell will not prevail against what Christ has brought us into. Man. Verse 6. Tabernacles of Edom now. Edom was Jacob's brother, huh? Esau. Esau is Edom. And he had a conflict with Jacob. Yes, and they were, I guess, up there in the book of Obadiah. They were in, uh, today we call it Petra, up there in the rocks. And when at one time when the Jews were being chased out of Jerusalem, Esau hit them when they were running. Hit them, attacked them. God never forgot about that. Ishmaelites. The Arabs say, we are from Ishmael. From a wife of Abraham, an Egyptian, Hagar. Sometimes the Jewish people made up made a little bit of trouble for themselves, and it doesn't end. Sarah, Abraham, Hagar, uh, Ishmael. Was Ishmaelites took Joseph to Egypt, gave him a, a trip there. Moab. And the Hagarites, of course, Moab, we'll see here, the children of Lot. That was one of the sons of, of by incest, of uh, Lot and his two daughters. Gibal? Pastor Larry, you, you say something about Gibal? I, I don't know Gibal. They weren't, they weren't friends to Israel. <laughs> they were enemies. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have time to check that out. Ammon, that's the the other son of the daughter of Lot. And Amalek, we just heard about uh, Haman, who was a Malachite. And, of course, we have many stories about the Philistines, David fighting the Philistines, Saul, with the inhabitants of Tyre. 
Jesus went to Tyre and Sidon, huh? Matthew 15, I believe. I believe we got it in Matthew 15 that Jesus went there to knew of a woman who had an understanding of the Jewish people. She was a Canaanite. She was not Jewish. But she had a daughter possessed of a demon. She called Jesus, thou son of David. <laughs> and Jesus yeah, cast the demon out of her daughter. Ashur, I believe that's a, a term for more than what we know about Syria today, that, that area up in there. And they are with Bashar al-Assad. They're in, and right now, there, there's rockets coming in from Syria into Israel and also from Lebanon and still from Gaza. Ashar is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. Yeah, and that's Moab and Ammon. Sila, let you think about these things, something to consider. And this is, I think they say, imprecatory psalm. Is that what they call it? Imprecatory. You're seeking the vengeance of God on your enemies. We pray that Christ protect us, but we also pray for our enemies. Matthew 5, pray for those who persecute you. Heap coals of fire on them so that they can repent. And that's, that's what I hope we get to it before we finish. Yes. Do unto them as the Midianites. Well, it's good to go through the book of uh, Jude and uh, Judges and the Midianites, Gideon and the Midianites. How is it Gideon fought the Midianites? Saul what the Phys Philistines, and what's the other one? I used to know. When I lived in Israel, I was up on all, but I've been out of Israel for a while. Canaanites, yeah, that's uh, Deborah and Barak. They fought the Canaanites. Sisera, there it is. He he was the Canaanite. I think I see which one is Sisera. Which is which? One was the general and one was the king. Is it Jabin the king, Sisera the general? Somebody help me. Am I am I right? I when I go to Israel, I always. Trust, you know, have a prayer that I could go to the Valley of Jezreel and I can travel all through that valley and remember th the histories of these things, like what we're reading right now. And I also like to go through the, the Hebrew word is uh, Shephelah, that's the rolling hills, a lot of history there. Valley of Ajalon, Beit Shemesh, Marashet, Lakish. A lot of history there. Wow, and David fought Goliath in the Valley of Elah. That's in the Shephelah. A lot of wars, and that's what's going on here. A lot of wars against the enemies of God. And they, they, they get their punishment. It comes to them. They may succeed, you know, in killing taking possession, but they get their punishment. Do unto them as unto the Midianites and to Sisera and to Jabin at the brook of Kishon. I've been there many times. Kishon overflowed there. The, the, the Canaanites had 900 chariots. Israel didn't even have a, a weapon. All they had was sticks. And the Canaanites had 900 chariots lined up along the Kishon. You know what happens when the rains? Kishon overfloods. All of a sudden, 900 chariots were in mud. And the general, 
He fled on foot. He got out of his chariot, wouldn't move. He had to get out on foot and run. Yael, wasn't that her name? Yael killed him. I think that that was Sisera. And he, they, which perished at Endor. I didn't check that out, but I guess that's where uh, Sisera was finished, Endor. Now, Endor is mentioned also in, in the battle in the Valley of Jezreel. Saul, before the Philistines killed him and his three sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, Malkishua. Malkishua is Jesus is my king. Malkishua. Nice name. And what did Saul do the night before the battle? Went to see a witch at Endor. And his spring doors. This generation. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb, that's again from the judges, and like Zeb, yea, all their princes as Zeba. Again, that's judges. And Zalmuna, who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God. You see, it's just not uh, taking somebody's house or their land, their possessions. This, they understood this belongs to the God of Israel. These, these are his. In Isaiah, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord. The Jews are the witnesses of Jehovah. So they say, we're going to take the houses of God. Ooh, be careful. You, you may have be surprised. They want to take possession. Verse 13, oh my God, make them like a wheel. Now, I don't really know that. You got, Brother Larry, you got a contact? What's it like to be, how is that negative? Wheel, just go round and round and round? We can study that. What's it that's trying to say? Just a reel goes round and round. It does move forward, but you don't get anywhere, huh? It's like the the mouse on the wheel, run round and round and round and round, round. <laughs> not getting anywhere. Hamster, I'm the hamster on the wheel. As the stubble before the wind. Yeah, it blows it away. As the fire burneth a wood, as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. Well, we've had enough pictures from California about that. We know what's going in, the destruction it can bring. So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with the storm. Now, there's a book written. Every time America made a decision against Israel, they got hit. Katrina was right after America decided to do something against. There's a man that's uh, documented it. Every time America made a decision against Israel, they got hit strong with a tempest and storm. God can use those things. Fill their faces with shame. Now we're getting to what, what it is. See, these people need to be humbled. They need to be ashamed. The Muslims, they're not ashamed of cutting the head off of a baby who's not a Muslim. They're not ashamed of uh, raping women. It's for them. Uh, I was just camping, and some guy, uh, I didn't know, I don't know who they were, uh, but he said, when we talk a little bit about that, he said they want to conquer. They want to conquer. It's their idea. It's their distorted idea of winning the game. So 
So they thought they could go in. Now the Muslims thought they'd go in Israel and do all this. Now what's happening? I heard today one of the guys who was so happy, you know, on the telephone, all this stuff was telephone. Every, all those terrorists had body cams. So it's all recorded. And they killed, I think, over a thousand of them, and they took over a thousand prisoners from the terrorists. And it's all recorded, everything they did. And then there was this one guy who was so proud of what he did, and then now they, he, he's, he's been shown on the video crying. Now the, the revenge, the response has hit them. The hope is that they'll be filled with shame, that they may seek thy name, O God. And that's it. I think that's what's so important. They will see that they're wrong. Uh, David Brainerd was a missionary to the American Indians. He was in Chattanooga, where I was for six years in the Bible school. One time he found an Indian who rejected the idea of, of God, of eternal things, of his tribe. He rejected it. He said, that, that's not true. I wait for another message. Then David Brainerd came with the message from the Bible. He said, that's it. That's what I've been waiting for. So if these people could come to reality. Muslims are being saved. Muslims are being saved. Praise God today. Yes that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Well, this is getting into the eternal damnation. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. Well, that's what's going to happen if they don't come to understand who Jesus is. Now, I've had many Muslims tell me, many, said, Michael, I love Jesus more than you do. They love Jesus. But it's a different Jesus. It's not the same. They say he's not the son of God. They say he was born from a virgin. They believe that. <laughs> Some Baptists don't believe that. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. With shame that they might be. Let them be. And, and that's, this is the missionary call now. These people are going to hell if they don't get this straightened out. What are we going to do about it? Pray. And if there's any people ready to go to the Muslims, get behind them. Help them. They need the gospel. And it's very difficult. I've been 20 times to Turkey. That, I don't know what that is, 96% uh, Muslim. And I've been 20 times to Egypt. I was arrested in Egypt uh, my last trip there. Two and a half months I was there. got arrested after that, taken to court. But we have to, so we got to get out there and, and help them somehow, some way. You may get in trouble, but you got to get them out of trouble. Yeah. Trouble forever. Put your shame and perish. That men may know. <clears throat> that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth. You see, Nebuchadnezzar found that out. Nebuchadnezzar found it out. And these Muslims can find that out too. If we pray for them and send people to go be amongst them, it's not easy, it's a little different, not the typical mission uh, uh, format, but they need the gospel. Isn't that true? Do we have a prayer? Yes, Father, we love you. <laughs> and we love your enemies. We love them. Even the Jews who reject your son, we love them. And we pray for them. And when we have occasions, we witness to them, give them literature. And so for these Muslims, we love them. They're, they're in our midst. What can we do? Help us, Father, to be alert, to be available for any Muslim that is searching and he has seen the shame of his ways and of his religion and they are seeking further light and truth. 
you are able to lead Christians to reach out to the Muslims here in America that some of them might be saved. It's for this purpose they came, yes. And all these immigrants coming across the border, we pray that there will be missionary work among them that they too can have an opportunity to know the Lord God, Jehovah of Israel, Jesus Christ, his Son, in the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. And bless the missionary program of this church, the many missionaries, and Central Missionary Clearinghouse, 800 families out there, mission work, praises be unto God, continue to provide for them, watch over them, help them, uh, deliver them from their troubles, from their enemies. May they be victorious in establishing churches and other mission work among them. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.